Welcome to the Transforming Trauma Podcast, a complex trauma podcast through the NARM Training Institute. My name is Sarah Buino, and I'm so excited to be sharing today's interview with you. Hey, Transforming Trauma listeners. Please join us starting in June for our online NARM training in learning how to transform trauma. This online NARM basics training is available for professionals working with clients or populations dealing with complex trauma. Now more than ever before, it's essential that we learn how to resolve complex trauma and support post-traumatic growth. NARM provides a relational approach to addressing the current COVID pandemic and tools to support healing in the aftermath of this collective trauma. If you're looking for more advanced training in complex trauma and are working in mental health, healthcare, education, substance abuse recovery, or allied fields, join us for this level one NARM training to become a NARM informed professional. For more information and to apply, please visit at www.narmtraining.com slash online basics. Welcome to Transforming Trauma. I am sitting here with Brad Kammer and Dr. Lawrence Heller. Hi, Brad. Hi, Larry. How are you today? Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. It's great to be here with you. Yeah, you too. So we're here today to talk about the online basics training. And and I think maybe let's just start off with what is that? Well, we're super excited about it. It's our brand new level one training. And we're reaching out beyond just working with mental health professionals, although mental health professionals are, of course, included and invited. But there's been so much interest over the years about NARM and the accessibility of NARM in terms of relating it to other fields. And this whole movement of trauma-informed care and Mm -hmm. how to bring it into the various fields, we can get into that more specifically in a few minutes about who this is really geared for. But we're just so excited to be able to launch it in a way that so many people can access it. And the online format is going to be allowing us to reach a greater number of people than we could if we were just traveling all around the world like we've been doing to teach mental health professionals. So, right. For me, there's been um, a number of my most senior people working with various different professional groups and education and physicians and nursing and other things that it just seemed like the time is right. Well, that was actually part of my next question. Why now? Part of it actually is, you know, dealing with COVID. Mm -hmm. We've been having to move our trainings online anyways, our live trainings, our clinical trainings. And we've just been so excited about how smoothly the transition has gone. There's a certain kind of feeling that happens in these NARM clinical trainings that's very powerful and heartfelt. And so we've been able to see how that translates online. And so we, we have expedited it. We've been working on it, but we really have expedited it now since people are getting more comfortable with the online format. And also just, you know, in reality of looking ahead and dealing with the aftermath of COVID and mm-hmm. that we're, you know, dealing with a collective trauma and that when we deal with collective trauma, it stirs up all sorts of unresolved issues internally for people. And so that's another piece of that we need more than ever before to get uh, NARM and models for complex trauma out Mm -hmm. into the world. And so we're really motivated to do that now. Yeah. The other thing too, I think, is that both Brad and I have experienced doing more and more webinars in recent months that uh, NARM translates so well into that medium. Yeah. And part of the training that I've experienced, we need to do online sessions with people. And I've actually found those just as deep as as in-person therapy. And it's incredible. Yeah. So you hinted, Brad, at who this is intended for. Do you want to share a little bit more about that? Yeah. You know, it's really for any profession that works with a population or with clients or with students that are coming from backgrounds or dealing themselves with complex trauma, with developmental trauma, with relational trauma. And so this could be teachers all the way from secondary education, university down to early education, Mm -hmm. you know, children that are growing up in families or environments that is leading to complex trauma, all the way to public policy, criminal justice, corrections, law enforcement, healthcare, as Larry mentioned, doctors and nurses, substance abuse counselors. I know that's close to your heart, Sarah, Mm -hmm. uh, because that's your specialty, first responders 
So it's really anyone that is coming across or working with populations of unresolved complex trauma, which is so many, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. many fields. And there's a couple of other groups that you might not consider, but for example, meditation groups and meditation mm-hmm. teachers and such that over the years, I've done a couple of consultations with different groups because doing meditation, for example, for a big percentage of people will start stirring things up. And again, that usually has to do with something around complex trauma. And we're going to address those kinds of themes as well as other professions that have in some way are, you know, dealing with trauma. Yeah. So meditation teachers, you know, all sorts of religious and spiritual counselors, of course. Mm -hmm. And then I, I forgot to mention also Part of the healthcare world is body workers. A lot of body workers are Mm. walking right into trauma that emerges as they're doing hands-on work. So there's just so many different fields that really are relating to trauma and need greater trauma-informed support. And that's where NARM really comes in. Right. I'm imagining if the world <laughs> if the world were NARM-informed, trauma-informed, if it was in schools and, like you said, law enforcement, how different the world would be. <laughs> yeah. And we actually have that situation where one of my European teachers is, her husband is a former principal and she was a mm. former school psychologist before, you know, and they're taking it to schools in many places mm. in Denmark and teaching it directly in schools. And they found great application. So we see that kind of application across the board. Yeah. In Grand Rapids, Michigan, Gina Essex, one of our lead training assistants, Mm -hmm. is applying NARM, working with law enforcement, first responders, military. Because, you know, we think of PTSD, we think of shock trauma when we, Mm -hmm. we think of that population. But the reality is that, I mean, that is true, of course. But the reality is that a shock trauma if there's a shooting or a situation that happens, it also brings up other elements. And there's a lot of stigma in those populations. There's a lot of re-traumatization that happens. And we believe that NARM can be a model that can really support those communities as well. Yeah. And one final elaboration of that too, is that so much has been lumped under the general category of stress, Mm. you know, as if that really explains what's going on. Of course, when you're dealing with unresolved trauma of all kinds, it's stressful. It it affects all the systems of the body. But we think that in the NARM training, we can help people understand the stress in various professions and with the people that these various professions are dealing with to understand it in a more useful and more hands-on and way that they can apply the understanding to their particular population. Right. Larry brought up another important piece that another focus of the NARM model is how to support the providers themselves. Right. And we talk in the field generally about vicarious trauma, secondary trauma, burnout. Those are real things that are happening for many people that, that whether they're conscious of it or not conscious of mm-hmm. it. And so NARM is an, a model that's not only directed to how we can support clients or patients or students, but also to the provider themselves. And and they're going to get elements of that in this online training that we believe will be a new way of viewing burnout or secondary Mm -hmm. trauma and will provide skills that they can take home and really use for themselves. It it speaks to another element too that you know about, Sarah, is that NARM is an experiential training and we're planning on continuing that on the online training thing too so that it's not just cognitive information that people right. will be receiving, but they'll get a lot of that, but also some direct experiential knowledge mm-hmm. because it's from that place that we can be most effective and helpful to other people. So they go hand in glove, as Brad was saying. It's, it's for the practitioner and for their population, but they end up being very, very closely related. Absolutely. And I want to talk about that magic just a little bit down the road. But first, if I'm just a Joe Schmo GQ public dude walking down the street and I'm interested in trauma, can I come to this? Well, that's not the plan for this one. We actually are developing a program for the general public designed for anybody who would be interested in their own healing, growth, whatever. And that would not be the orientation here that we're looking for people who are in some ways doing trauma-informed care. And of course, Mm -hmm. our orientation will be the NARM orientation to Mm trauma-informed care. Mm -hmm. Good to know. So what's the structure of this? What is this going to look like for people? Yeah, so we're going to do four weekend modules and it's going to be live. 
and we're going to run it Friday through Sunday. It starts June 26th, so we'll have one weekend in the end of June, one weekend in July, one in August, and then we'll wrap up in September. Larry and I will be co-teaching along with Stephanie Klein, who will be also one of the NARM faculty. And we'll have a team also of, of trainers with us to support the integration for people that are participating. And it runs, this is Pacific time, where Larry and I are in California. So it runs from nine in the morning till four in the afternoon. And we'll have lunch, of course, and a couple breaks in there. And as Larry said, we really teach NARM in the way that you know we do NARM which is very mm -hmm. integrative. We are teaching didactic, and there's gonna be some very conceptual theoretical pieces about the field of trauma and specifically about the organizing principles of NARM. But then, as Larry mentioned, it's really important that people get it not just from a conceptual, but that they actually can use it for themselves and, and then be able to practice it for themselves. So we're gonna be weaving in and out these exercises, some small group practices, Larry and I will be demonstrating some NARM principles and skills in action. We'll be able to watch some videos. So there's going to be a lot of different elements of the learning process to keep it really engaged. You know, it is difficult for people to sit in front of the screen for all day for three days, but we're going to make sure we give them a really great learning opportunity. Well, and I can vouch for doing a NARM training online when we even did just a, a couple hours one day, Brad, and I was just, I wanted more. Mm -hmm. So there's something about the, the magic of NARM and the heart connection really that, that comes into this work that is just so engaging. You know, uh, an interesting thing, Sarah, is that Brad and I have been uh, surprised that one is that we just basically five days ago announced this very little advertising of a Facebook mention and so on. And we've already got a big number, but we also have people from Australia, from the mm -hmm. Netherlands, from Turkey. We're wondering how they're going to manage these different time zones because <laughs> right. it's, you know, some very, very big, but mm -hmm. these are very motivated people, I guess. Mm -hmm. And we, of course, welcome them and appreciate whatever sacrifice they're going through to make it happen. But mm -hmm. uh, it's been a really uh, pleasant surprise, I think, to me and uh, to Brad as well. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and I think it speaks to the hunger for, I mean, this this is still new, this understanding of developmental and complex trauma. There's not a lot of models out there that are really ready to be adapted for complex trauma, and NARM is just so positioned perfectly to be a model that's already addressing complex trauma, but is so effective and powerful. And so once people get a feel for it, even people just reading Larry's book, Healing Developmental Trauma, they're already often getting a feel for it. But then when they come into our online programs or to our live classes, I think people will really see how useful and powerful this model really, really can be. Mm -hmm. Can you name what that magic is? <laughs> Larry? <laughs> well, you know, I think one of it, part of it is the heartfulness quality to it, the, the non-pathologizing, non-judgmental part, you know, there's one thing, and, and, and it's, of course, compassion is a wonderful and powerful tool, but it, it's only one tool, because you can be compassionate without necessarily being accepting, and even under the name of compassion, there are sometimes a, a certain kind of judgment. I think people are drawn to the fact that NARM really is not judgmental in the sense that we don't look at, we don't talk about defenses or resistance. Really, the the very things that saved our lives as children, the various kinds of coping mechanisms that we used to save our lives end up outliving their usefulness. And those are the things that are now causing us difficulties. But we don't want to ever reject some element that we develop that was once life-saving. We don't want to stay stuck in it. But there's something about that kind of communication in many different forms that you're suffering not because you, there's anything you've done wrong. You're suffering because there are things that you're continuing to use, you know, ways of managing your life that have outlived their usefulness. And of course, most of us grew up blaming ourselves in a variety of different ways uh, from, you know, very early on. And in NARM and in the trainings, we have a real particular way of helping first bring it to the light and then help people find ways to release themselves from some of those, those judging and self-rejecting mm -hmm. patterns. Larry says this better than I do, but 
you know, Larry, you've talked a lot about the humanizing element of NARM mm -hmm. and how we live in a society that's so reductionistic, but mm -hmm. there's something about the way that we meet humans, our fellow humans, with deep curiosity and really interest in wanting to know who they are on a whole, whole range of who they are and not narrowing it down to just good emotions and bad emotions or to neurotransmitters or to all these mm -hmm. other ways. Behaviors is a way that teachers or parents often will kind of look at their children through that lens. And so we're really holding this larger element. And when we're on the receiving end of that, again, it's a, a foundation of the trauma-informed movement that it can be in itself very healing to be held for not just your behaviors, mm -hmm. which Larry mentioned before, are often strategies that we've been relying on, but that there's something much larger, which is who we are ourselves. Mm -hmm. The word I particularly like to use, because I think it's so important, is we're interested in the individual and their inner world. Yeah. You know, And that kind of curiosity, as Brad mentioned, that we bring to the others inner world without reducing them, you know, to be slightly repetitive, but it's so important, not reducing them to neurotransmitters or to personal history or to nervous systems. All those elements are a part of the bigger picture, but just a part. We're really bringing the human being, I feel, again, not just behaviors, but the whole human being back to central focus of the central focus of our work. Mm -hmm. And to take it back to, you know, the professional working on themselves in this process, again, I'm just kind of envisioning the teacher who has that view of themselves, the mm. police officer who has that view of themselves, the parent, right? I'm sure that you're thinking about doing a parenting course at some point, which would be incredible. The possibilities are just really inspiring. Yeah. The one additional piece, Sarah, I wanted to add, you asked about the magic. I think for providers, what we find in our mental health professional trainings is this is such a common feedback for Larry and I at the end of the training is that therapists have found that they're putting less pressure. They're working less hard. They're finding more ease and more joy and pleasure in their work. And, and this is tough work being a therapist, of course, when you're working with trauma. But they're finding that there's some way of learning these principles and applying them to themselves and their work that allows them to engage with their work from a different place. And we, we really are intending to bring that into this training as well so that the teachers or whoever it is that is looking to not only learn what to do from a trauma-informed perspective, but how can they show up from a trauma-informed perspective with themselves in a way that can hopefully lead to less burnout, less stress, mm -hmm. and, and those sorts of things. Again, to just kind of piggyback on what Brad was saying, there will be a special section on the some of the particular patterns that those individuals in various helping professions tend to fall into. You know, in traditional psychological terms, I talk about counter-transference. We don't need to necessarily use that term, but we're talking about these kinds of patterns that they bring to the various kinds of helping professions that are not necessarily the most effective and can often be quite exhausting for the practitioners. And as, as Brad mentioned, we have ways to help people learn how to do their work more efficiently and with less personal strain and stress. Mm -hmm. So what's required and how do people sign up? Well, required to be in a uh, field, like we mentioned earlier, that you're working in some sort of population or with clients or students or patients that are showing signs of, of trauma, complex trauma, and to learn more information of, about what complex trauma even is and, and how we look at it and how we present it, then you could go to the online basics training webpage, which is narmtraining.com slash online basics. And we'll make sure we get that up in the show mm -hmm. notes and all that stuff. And then after somebody completes this training, what's next? So they get a certificate of being a NARM-informed professional. That's what the certificate gives them. So they can go out and, and talk about how NARM has influenced their work in the different fields. And for those people that are in the mental health profession, they can continue on to the second level of the training, which is the NARM therapist training. We actually have four levels now. So there's the NARM therapist training. There's the NARM master's therapist training, which is level three. And the newly created 
fourth level, which is an arm postmaster's training. And we hope in the next year or 18 months to have a, a separate track for people that are outside of the mental health profession that they can continue to advance mm. level two, level three, level four, but not so clinically oriented. And mm -hmm. so that's also kind of, we're still at the planning stages. That's going to be a big project, but we hope to have that in the next year or two. Yeah, it's so exciting. The other thing I would just mention also is that we do have an online ongoing program called the NARM Inner Circle. So that's another place that people mm -hmm. could come get a taste of what NARM's like. We have our own private Facebook group and we, ha we show demonstration videos every month and Larry and I will break them down on a live webinar call and through our transcripts. And then Larry and I take different topics every month. So we also have an online program that's more of a self-study program that doesn't lead you to any sort of certificate or training, but it's just useful for people that want to continue to integrate this trauma-informed, NARM-based learning. Yeah, and I can vouch for that too, that it's really helpful. I think it's a really cost-effective way if people are like, I don't know if I really want to invest in the training, but seeing some of these videos and listening to the webinars might be a good little taste of it that get people excited and want to do more. That's right, yeah, because you could sign up just for a month and just get a flavor mm -hmm. of it. And I also yeah. wanted to, to make a comment that one of the great things for us in, in doing this online is that it has allowed us to make it more financially accessible. Right. We've gotten feedback over the years that, you know, for people that want to really desperately learn NARM and we only have a few trainings in North America, they got to fly to Chicago or fly to Florida or fly to, the, you know, San Francisco there's time off work, there's expense, you know, that's a big commitment. And it costs more on our end to do the live trainings. And so of course, the cost of those trainings is, is more expensive. So this has allowed us to really pare it down and make it more financially accessible and people can do it from their homes. And, you know, we're really excited again about this new format, because we're really, you know, I'm speaking for Larry here, but we're passionate about NARM and passionate about getting this work out there. And this is just a really wonderful vehicle for us and time for us to do that. Yeah. Was there anything else we didn't talk about that you really want to make sure we share with listeners? Really? I think we covered a lot of the, the significant mm -hmm. elements here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Larry. I always appreciate time with you and, and Brad same. I get to see you in a couple weeks, so I'm excited about that, but thank you again. And I'm, I'm really excited to share this with the world. Well, thanks for hosting. It's always nice to be here with you too. Yeah, it is. Thank you, Sarah. Appreciate it. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode. If you want to learn more, you can check out the show notes or visit us at www.narmtraining.com slash transforming trauma. The Transforming Trauma Podcast is brought to you by the NARM Training Institute. NARM practitioner trainings for mental health professionals are offered across North America and internationally. Please join us starting in June for our online NARM training in learning how to transform trauma. This online NARM basics training is available for professionals working with clients or populations dealing with complex trauma. NARM provides a relational approach to addressing the current COVID pandemic and tools to support healing in the aftermath of this collective trauma. Join us for this level one NARM training to become a NARM informed professional. For more information and to apply, please visit at www.narmtraining.com slash online basics. Thanks to Andrea Clunder and the Creative Imposter Studios for producing and editing, to Tori Essex for our album art, and to Brad Kammer for the creation of this podcast. We really look forward to building community and connection with you and changing the world by transforming trauma. Mm -hmm.